What was your worst Christmas? What was my worst Christmas? Uh, probably when I ruined Christmas for my entire family. Okay, so it's Christmas Eve and it's me. I'm the oldest of all the kids between my brother, my sister, my cousins. And everybody's promising Santa Claus is coming. Ooh, this is exciting. Except I already know that Santa Claus is a work, brother. I am not about to allow my brother, sister, and cousins to fall for this fakery. So I'm gonna make sure they all know that this is not really Santa Claus, that this is a fake. And my mom's like, shut up. And I'm like, I will not be quiet. You will not silence me. I will not allow you to pull this trickery upon the people that I am the oldest one of, the kids. So here comes Santa Claus. And I'm like, I knew it, I knew it. I knew it all along. That's not Santa Claus. And I jump right up and I go, that's Uncle John. And everybody just looks at me and ignores me. And it's Santa, ho, ho, ho. And he's giving out the presents to all my cousins. And they're going, yeah, Santa. I'm 10, okay? So everybody's younger than me, okay? Yeah, Santa Claus. I'm like, it's not Santa Claus. It's Uncle John. And I'm like, shut up. Everybody in my family. My aunt, my mom, here comes my dad. Now my dad would throw me through a wall, okay? Frank Murphy style. He's gonna kill me, okay? And he grabs me and he's like, I'm gonna shut the mouth or I'm gonna put you through that wall. Oh my God. You don't scare me, dad. That's Uncle John, I know it is. He yanked off his beard. He goes, you little bat. That's me. <laughs> I got punished. And I ruined it for everybody. And they're like, this not Santa? Uncle John, Santa? What's going on? And that's it. I ruined it. I ruined it. So, what's up, everybody? It's Grim. I'm doing story time. I'm doing some Q&A. We're hanging out, having a little fun. It's Christmas. I had a pretty good Christmas. How was your Christmas? Let me know in the comments below. I especially want to know what you've got, okay? I'll tell you what I got. Me and Tina went to Miami last week. <laughs> we went on a short little three-day outing, not to vlog, not to do anything other than chill and have fun on the beach in 80-degree Miami because it's disgustingly cold here in new crap Jersey, and we hate it. So let's ask, let's answer some more questions. That that quest, that first question was from AEW Rules Ask. Okay, Daniel from Holland. Does Ebenezer Middlesdorf still live with you? I kind of put Ebenezer on pause because I've been doing on my other channel, Grimm's Toy Show, with the action figure unboxings from Ringside Collectibles where you use discount code Grimm to save 10%. I felt like Ebenezer wasn't getting watched as much as just me being eagle-assed. That means higher than an eagle's ass. But yeah, me and Duhoff have just been doing the unboxings over there, eagle-assed, and everybody's been liking it a little better than Ebenezer. So I just... Ebenezer's on hiatus right now. What inspired me to become a wrestler? Probably uh, Shawn Michaels. Like, Razor Ramon was my favorite wrestler, okay? Like, he was the best. But, like, HBK, I was like, I'm like HBK. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. And I want to beat people up and kick them in the mouth. So, therefore, he inspired me to become a wrestler. It was you, Shawn. It was you all along. <laughs> Steven Caesar says, what inspired you to become a wrestler and start your own wrestling promotion? All right, so first of all, you know, when I was a kid, obviously, I wanted to grow up and be the WWE, right? And that didn't work out. And then, like, later on, all of a sudden, there's, like, YouTube, and I started doing YouTube videos and wrestling on Fridays, and it just kind of morphed over time. And I said, well, now we're going to have a whole show with belts, and, and then wrestlers were pulling up, and real wrestlers were pulling up, and it just, it morphed from me fighting with the mailman over my action figure packages on Friday afternoons to an entire wrestling promotion. Just a natural progression. And I think the next thing that we want to do is take it live. When you guys want to come to GTS live events once a month in an arena, let me know in the comments below. Smash the like button if that's what you want. GTS live events like once a month. We build up to them on YouTube and then they're live at the GTS arena, but like not where we are at GTS Arena. Like live, like a live event where fans can come and you guys can all cheer for us and crap and be part of the video. And we, like we go live once a month on my YouTube channel. Wouldn't that be banging? Let me know in the comments below if you think we should do it.
Cobra Kai 24. If you could team with any wrestler from any promotion, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a tough one. Who do I want to team with? Adrenaline in my soul. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. And why do I want to team with Cody Rhodes? Because he's the American nightmare. And let me tell you, I've lived an American nightmare. And now I'm ha back to reclaim my kingdom. Okay? So we have a similar path. We both want the gold. I want a team with Cody Rhodes. Because it's relatable. You know what I'm saying? I want you guys to relate to me just the way you guys relate to Cody. The struggle is real. We struggle together. We got this. David Griffin says, Will you and Tina ever move to a bigger house? Since Donna's been a bigger pain in the ass than ever before. Um... That would be fantastic. You guys want to like add like 8 million views per month to my channel? And then I could move. Because <laughs> right now, not in the cards. But we're going to build back. We're going to build it up bigger and better than ever. Right here on the Grim Experience. Right over there on Silly Super Pop. We're going to do some awesome new things this year. And I might even start a new channel. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. What am I going to do on my new channel? Subscribe and find out. It's going to be fun. I want it to be a good time, and I want it to be something different. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think I should do different on my new channel? I kind of want to do, like, I want to talk with you guys and do, like, therapy and stuff and advice, relationship advice. I want to do that. And I also want to chronicle, like, my weight loss journey without trying to be, like, grim, you know? Because you guys expect a certain grim on this channel, I feel like. And if I'm just, like, all of a sudden just being normal Dave, like, making my protein shake for breakfast, you'd be like, this is boring. But if I do it on a different channel, different audience, maybe you guys might like it. Maybe somebody else might like me. They'll have me. We'll see. <laughs> 80s Junkie asks, what is your biggest fear in life and your biggest regret? My biggest fear is like my phobias, like drowning, like like I'd suffocating, like that feeling, like I'm claustrophobic. So even like if I even get close to that, I freak. So that's like a huge fear of mine. Uh, I, I don't have really regrets. Like I've had horrible things happen to me in my life. I've done ridiculous things in my life, but everything taught me a lesson and everything put me on the road to where I am now. So it's like if I regret doing it, if I regret being there, whatever, then it's like that might not have brought me here. So I have no regrets. I, you know, I, I messed up a bunch. I apologize for it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a human. I'm not perfect, okay? I'm going to make mistakes. And the sign of a good human is atoning for that mistake. You know, owning it, saying, hey, look, I'm sorry. Growing up and say, look, I'm not going to do that again. I messed up because I'm, I'm human and we're all going to screw up at one point or another. You know, it's it's when you when you don't own up to it or when you think you're right, when you're just being a jerk and everybody else thinks you're a jerk. Like that, when you don't own it, like the whole thing with the Jugger Nuggets thing, the whole thing with the Nia Jax thing. Like, like I screwed up at times, okay? I'll own it all the damn time. So, no regrets. Own the bull crap. I own it. Lucha asks, how fat are you? Oh, this is, this is Lucha... Uh, this guy, you've seen him in my videos. I put you over, you blue masked stupid. I put him over. I did him a favor and put him over. This guy right here, I, I want you to all go and tell him that Grim put you over. Grim was really cool to you and now you're being a jerk for no reason. Tommy Patey, what wrestler from the past you never got to meet? Giving the chance, would you meet? Yokozuna, didn't even hesitate. That guy was so cool. I wanna hang out with him. I want to go to dinner with him, and I want to eat it, yeah, with him. How cool would it be to hang out with Yokozuna, the fattest champion of all time, and eat it, yeah. Plus, he's related to the head of the buffet No, the head of the, what's it? That, I'm the head of the buffet table. What's Roman's thing? <laughs> head of the table, yeah. Roman Reigns, what's the one I'm saying? Roman Reigns, he's related. How cool is that? I want to hang out with the bloodline. Nunzio, I'm not answering that. Tom Gibbs says, did you ever want to be on Tough Enough? Actually, yes. At one point, I and did I send an audition tape? Yeah, I did. Uh, at one point, I was like, I, that was like, I had already given up on my indie dream. I wasn't indie wrestling anymore. and But I still was wrestling, still training and whatever. And then Tough Enough came out. And I was like, I'm sending in an audition tape. And I did one, and I sent it in, and I got nowhere. Guess what else I auditioned for? I tried to get on uh, Deal or No Deal. Like, I tried really hard to get on there. 
And then they were even casting for WWE fans. And they put that guy with the blue shirt and the red hat that's always in the front row with the signs. I'm like, I'm way funnier than him. I would have had way better, fun, cooler, more exciting episode than him. But I didn't get paid. Maybe next time. I've been in other cool things. You know, it is what it is. Skulls, the Soul Hunter. Who trained me? Iron Mike Sharp, brother. Iron Mike Sharps, Asbury Park, New Jersey. <laughs> Rob Irvin. When are you and Tina actually getting married? And will Doohop sing at it? All right, when are me and Tina gonna get married? Um, we're pr we're really bad at planning things. Like, like for example, we went to Miami uh, last week as like a Christmas present. We were like, what do you wanna do for Christmas? I'd love to go to Miami. Man, I would love that too. Wanna go? Okay. Okay, we're booked, we go tomorrow. Like, that's just how we live life. That's just who we are. Like, people are like, oh, yes, we're, we're getting married in 2027. Like, what, 2027? Like, you're planning it now? It's like, what? Like, I would plan it in like, 2027. So I don't know. We're just really bad at that kind of thing. But like, I just, just know this. We're going to be together. We're always going to be here. Me and Tina. We're the team ribeye and we're nailing at times too. And whether we get the law involved in our marriage, in our life or not, we might just elope to Vegas. That's probably what we're going to do. We're going to pull a full on Triple H and Stephanie. <laughs> Yo. Yo, what an episode. Subscribe. Okay. Mr. Weishman, who would win in a huge ass fight? You or Rikishi? Clearly me. Matthew Loving, what is your favorite indie show that you wrestled for? Hmm. Dude, the Creative Pro shows were always great. I think, honestly, yeah. That one where I was supposed to fight Kurt Hawkins and instead fought Bear Bronson. I mean, which was still cool. He's in AEW now. But I was supposed to fight Kurt Hawkins, damn it. Kurt Hawkins got involved in the match anyway. The crowd was so into that. And that was something we built on my YouTube channel. And that had so much heat. The place was sold out. They were standing out the goddamn, like, it pisses me off, Brian, that you didn't fight me that night because that was magic. You you dropped the ball so hard on that. He says WWE wouldn't let him. Maybe they wouldn't. I don't know. He, Hawkins fears grim. We had people lined out. I don't think Creative Pro's ever done business like that before, Brian. We had people out in the goddamn parking lot trying to get in because it was standing room only. And me and Bear went at it, and we went at it hard, and it was a good-ass match. And then Bear wins, and nobody expected that. Everybody thought I was gonna win. And, and they were like, what? And then Doohop's music hits, and he comes out with the briefcase to cash in. And I, I, I've never heard a bigger pop at an indie show, ever. Ever. And I've been to hundreds. I've never heard a bigger pop. And that was the magic that me and create a pro and Brian Myers and my brother. That's the magic we made. And it's like, like I love Major Pod and they do great stuff. Like I feel like we should be doing things together because we made that magic. Like, duh, we could be doing that all the time. We could be selling out like, I think we could make a better show than like stuff on TV right now. Like, cause we get it, you know what I mean? Like TV doesn't get it right now, but we get it. We did it once, do it again. James O'Connor, what's your favorite and funniest moments while filming GTS and do you think about doing blooper reels? Uh, we kind of leave those bloopers in. <laughs> if you see last week when Cletus tripped over the goddamn stump, like that was a shoot, brother. Like we don't script this. Like you guys gotta understand, like people are like, oh, GTS is pro wrestling, it's scripted, but like it's not. Like <laughs> you understand, it's like we turn the camera on and just see what happens. And it's like, okay, yeah, like, okay, uh, it's scripted. Okay, Jungle Jim, you're going to fight uh, Cletus today. You know, whatever. Like, oh, Jungle Jim, it's you versus James Gray, whatever. Like, yeah, that part, you know? And, and then we try, we try to tell them, like, who we want to win, but it doesn't always happen. Like, it, it's very much an improv show. It's very much made up on the fly. It's very much that's what happens. And, and everybody's like, oh, like, how could we possibly script that? We used to upload that stuff every single goddamn day. It's impossible. Steve K asks, do you still keep in touch with the old GTS guys that aren't on YouTube show anymore? Uh, some of them, yes, but not the ones you listed. For example, he lists Nightmare and Roman Grape. Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, who do I talk to? Like, uh, the Mark Jeff Bravo I still talk to. Uh, Brandon the Bull. Uh, Casey Navarro, um, Jake Reaper, 
uh, Jake Cage. You know, I try to keep up with them. You know, say, hey, how you doing? How you been? Jordan Oliver, you know, like they, they're they they're alumni from the show and I still like to reach out to them and, and you know, uh, congratulate them. A lot of them are moved on to like awesome things and I like to reach out to congratulate them. Say, hey, man, you're killing it. Keep it up. I want to see you on TV. It's great. Uh, Roderick Strong Fan asks, how come you stopped doing GTS shoot interviews? Um, I don't know. Why'd we stop? We should do them again, right? That'd be, that'd be fun. Okay. Uh, do you prefer tag team wrestling or normal one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> well, put it this way. It, this was from Aaron. And and Aaron, let me tell you, in a tag team match, you only have to do half the work. It's So it, it, what do you, you want to do? You know, do you want to wrestle for 10 minutes? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I want to just do half the work. So I like both. If you could create one new GTS championship, what would it be? From Jonathan Holiday. Fatal Four Way Championship. Does anybody do that? Like it's a title only defended in Fatal Four Ways. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, Aaron's also asking, what's the most important GTS championship? The GTS Legendary YouTube Championship. It's literally the lineage of the YouTube Wrestling Figures Heavyweight Championship. The most prestigious, longest historied championship in the history of YouTube. This platform here. I made it. I was the first one to make a YouTube championship and have it defended vigorously, have it held by top names in independent wrestling from television from all over the world. That is the very, very prestigious championship. Add to it the lineage of the GTS Heavyweight Championship. Also a very prestigious long history championship held by other top names in this industry. Add to it the legendary championship, which also has that similar history. They're all just, each one was just a little bit less of a lineage than each other. All three championships have been unified into that gold belt. That is the most prestigious heavyweight YouTube championship in the history of this platform times three. That's how important that title is. And that's why I'm not just going to let any old clown run around with it. No matter what Cletus tries to book or how they try to screw me over. Don't ever give up on this because I'm at my best when the odds are against me. When the chips are down is when I'm up. I thrive on adversity and I dare you to doubt me because your doubt motivates me. And if you think for one second, I'm gonna let that clown run around with my heavyweight championship, it's important and I will get it back. XJS, who do you think should, who do you think should dethrone Roman Reigns, The Rock or Cody? Let's see. I'd love The Rock versus Roman, but I want Roman to win. I'd love the the Roman versus Cody, but I want Cody to win. So, I guess Cody? I guess I'm going with the Codester. Which WWE star would you want to face in a match? Currently, today, if I could face any WWE star in a match, Logan Paul. What? Could you imagine? First of all, he's barely established in WWE, but he's highly established superstar, right? He's a YouTuber, right? I'm a YouTuber. I'm the wrestling YouTuber, damn it. He's the YouTuber YouTuber. I'm the wrestling YouTuber. I'm the biggest goddamn wrestling YouTuber that's ever existed on this platform by far, okay? And if anybody should step in the ring with Logan Paul, it should be me. Maybe I got to punch the crap out of Jake Paul for real first, but I will get my opportunity against Logan Paul in that ring somehow, some way. It's got to go down. Do you prefer men or women wrestling storylines? I like both. Okay, I, this is how I feel, and this is how GTS is, okay? What are men and women's relationships? Men and women's relationships are always falling in love with each other, fooling around with each other, sneaking around with each other, uh, dumping each other for this one. That's just life, you know? And I feel like wrestling should reflect that more, you know? I like when there's on-screen couples. There should be. And I'm not saying they always have to be coupled up like everybody does, but there should be a lot more of that. I felt like when Eddie Guerrero and China had that storyline, like I was so invested in it, like a soap opera. It was fantastic. And there needs to be more of that. So like, it doesn't matter if it's a man's storyline or a woman's storyline. I feel like they should all be blended. Imagine it was all blended. You know what I mean? We had more mixed tags, right? We had more, you know, men one-on-one -on -one with the women in their corners, more women one-on-one -on -one with the men in the corners. You know, or women and women together, 
you know, men and men together, gay couples, lesbian couples, polyamorous couples, like, you know, a guy with two girls, a girl with two guys, like normalize this stuff, normalize relationships in wrestling more. I just, I don't know. It's supposed to be a soap opera for guys basically, right? But it's like soap operas are soap operas without matches, okay? Wrestling is soap operas with matches. That's what I want to see. Finally, Devin asks, when are you going to start doing some workout vlogs from the gym? Okay, do you guys remember back in like 2018, I was really trying to get in shape and I started doing workout vlogs from the gym? And guess what? I got in trouble. I came walking in and I scanned in bleep and they go, oh, hold up, Dave. They said, uh, there's a notation on your account uh, we need to speak with you about. And I was like, oh, what is it? Did I, did I not pay? I'm like, I can pay. And they're like, no, no, um, the vlogging. There's, there's no vlogging allowed in the gym. And I step back and I go, bro, my dad's in corporate. He said, it's okay. I patted him on the shoulder. I walked away and I made another video. <laughs> then they discontinued my membership. So I really don't have a father <laughs> in corporate. But what I did do is I switched gyms and I really like my gym and I have a lot of friends at my gym and I don't want to film at my gym. And the reason being is because they don't, want you to see the people in the back you know what i'm saying and i get that i wouldn't want to be in the background working out in somebody else's friggin' workout vlog so like i get that but like now that like i said i'm becoming friendly with people at the gym maybe i can like incorporate something i mean retro fitness is like a company even though this is an independent franchise they're a big company so maybe i can do something where like oh well, they can sponsor me maybe we can make some workout vids that'd be cool Guys, I appreciate you watching this. Hope you guys had an awesome holiday season. New Year's coming up. Let's talk New Year's resolutions. Put them down in the comments below. I already started mine. Better health. And I told you guys earlier, new channel. New stuff from the Grumpster in 2023 and live events. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it, yeah!